Hey everybody, Brian Maples back with another video here. I hope you are all doing well today. Uh, I want to go ahead and show you guys what my process is for starting a new brand, a new company, a new product. Um, so let's go ahead and get started without further ado. And what I'd like to start with, I'm, I have, what I have here is I have GoDaddy pulled up. So where I like to start is I like to find a domain. Um, I like to find a domain that I can, that is available, that's also going to be available under trademark search. So I'll go to something like GoDaddy, Google, Google domains, uh, network solutions, wherever you go to find your domains and buy your domains, that's fine. I just happen to use GoDaddy. I like the interface, even though I pay a little more, just easy to use. So what I did is I pre-pulled up a few domain names I found that were available. So let's say, for example, you want to sell under the art niche. And you don't exactly know what your product is, but you know you want to sell under the art niche or, you know, somewhere in that area. You might want to go with something like art shops. Now, I want to let you know that you don't have to have a domain. And again, you don't have to do all these processes I'm doing. This is just how I do it. You can do it your own way if you want. But this is a great way to start, in my opinion. So once I found out that this is available, right, I can go ahead and buy the domain. Or maybe you want to go with something more general, like Zen Buzz without the two Zs. Maybe that's something that you can kind of sell any general product if you don't really know what you want to go with. So, you know, there are different sites that will give you ideas for names. There are a lot that are already taken, but you can usually find something cool that you can come up with. So search around. Uh, let's say I'm going to use this Zen Buzz right here with uh, the one Z. So what I would do is I would go to a trademark search and not just any trademark search. I would go to the USPTO trademark search. So what I'm going to type in Google, if you notice right here, I'm going to type in USPTO trademark search. And usually it's the first one here. I'm going to click on that. And then this search our trademark database, T-E-S-S, -S, I'm going to click on that. And usually I'll just do a basic word mark search. Now, I, if you can see here, I've looked up some different things. Um, for example, uh, if you want to go cool arts, right? Let's submit that and see. So we can see that it's been live before, but it's dead now. But it's currently live right now. Cool art. So you can see that this is published uh, in 2020, um, February of 2020, and published in June 2nd. So there was a period there where basically if somebody can oppose that they have the same trademark or if they you know want to want to contest it. But this is the person that owns that trademark, and they use it for graphic T-shirts. Uh, and they had it registered as of 2020. So that's kind of how you know if it's available. Um, you can also do like picture, tr you know, trademarks. I don't want to get into the, all the details, but best usually going with a basic word trademark. Sometimes you can like, you know, get those without an issue, depending on what the name is, right? So let's say art shops. Um, if I go to search for art shops under here, Okay, here I have it in my history, and I'm going to submit it. Nothing comes up. That's a good thing. That means nobody has it uh, for the word, word trademark. So that might be a good one to choose if I want to do an art product. Now, why I like to get the domain, I like to get the domain so I can do a Shopify product. I can do something like that in the future, um, you know, big commerce, whatever you're going to use. Maybe I want to be able to sell my products eventually on my own website. So I want to have a website that's going to match up with my brand name. Uh, it's just ideal. It's easy. And then I'm going to want to have a trademark because I eventually want to get brand registered. And in order to get brand registered, you're going to have to have a trademark or an application for a trademark through what's called IP Accelerate, which we can get to in another video. So I found, let's say I'm going to use Zen Buzz, and I'm going to, I've already searched for it under trademark. I found out that it doesn't exist. I don't see anybody that has it. The next step is usually what I'm going to do. I'm going to usually go to... Um, Amazon, and I want to maybe type in Amazon and Zen Buzz, right? Maybe we want to look and see if we can find it. Um, I don't see anything. I'll click on a few things for Amazon. I, I'd probably go to Amazon as well, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and type in Zen Buzz, and I don't really see anything pop up. So I don't think anybody on Amazon has that name. I have the domain. I know it's free for trademark. And I also see that I don't see anybody on Amazon using it. And why is that all important? 
you want to be able to use it for your Amazon name. Now, I want to make it clear that you don't have to have your Amazon name match up with your Amazon brand. However, you do, if you want to be brand registered, you're going to have to have your brand name match your trademark. So I like to keep it all together as one name. It just makes things easier. However, if I did Zen Buzz and then I wanted to create, let's say, um, um, a, a pet brand under there. Let's say I didn't want to put Zen Buzz on it for whatever reason. I wanted to put Zen Pet, right, or Pet Zen. Um, if it was available on Amazon and I could get the trademark, then I could do that. And I could register it under Brand Registry as a separate brand under my company name, Zen Buzz, right? So – I do like to keep things consistent across the board. You don't have to do it that way. You can have multiple brands under one company name, but it's up to you. I like to keep it consistent if at all possible, and then later I can worry about putting other brand names under my trademark name, which would also be my selling name on Amazon. Um, it's just the way I like to do it. You don't have to do it that way. It's up to you. Oh, excuse me. A little bit of dry mouth here. So what I would like to do at that point is I'm going to go to Inkfile. I like using Inkfile. It's very easy. You don't have to use Inkfile again. It's just very simple for me to do the filing for you. I've had pretty good, pretty good success with Inkfile. I've had a few hiccups here and there, but ultimately they're pretty good. So what you would do is you'd go to Inkfile.com. You would hit Start My Business. And I'm just going to hit Resume Order. Um, basically, when you go in here, they're going to ask you – let's start over. They're going to ask you, you know – do you want an LLC? Do you want an S-Corp? Now, I have an S-Corp, and I also have a couple of LLCs, but ultimately everything's under my S-Corp for tax purposes. There are advantages and disadvantages. If you want to know those, I'm not an accountant. I would talk to an accountant. They should be able to give you those differences, and if you're ready to do that. Generally, if you're just starting out, you want to go with an LLC, you'll be taxed. And again, as my understanding is, you'll be taxed under your normal income for federal taxes. Depends on your state for other things, but... You'll be taxed under your, your basically your, your whatever you make. Now, the advantages of S Corps, you have to eventually pay a salary and everything, is that you can get certain tax write offs depending on how much you're bringing in. So I wouldn't worry about the S Corp quite yet. I'd probably do that down the line. You can always file for S election. Uh, I believe it's March, end of March of every year. I could be wrong about that. But you can always file for an S election later. Okay. So if you're just starting off, probably just choose an LLC. Now, if you choose Wyoming or Delaware, my understanding is what I've been told is that it has more legal protection. So you get in a car wreck, right? Uh, somebody sues you for your assets. My understanding is it has better protection to, to protect your assets. So somebody can't take your home or your business assets or something like that. Um, I understand that Delaware and Wyoming are more um, protective uh, in the court for your LLC. Now, I do mine in Pennsylvania, and that's up to you. Um, but I just want to mention that that's what I've been told. Um, so what I'd like to usually do, I'd like to give you a little give a gold package typically. And I would fill out my name, information, email, phone number, right, mailing address. It's going to take you through all the details. Now, it is going to ask you like where you want basically any kind of um, correspondence to be sent. As far as if you get sued, uh, it's like an agent. You can be your own agent if you want. Just put your home address if you want them to choose an agent for you, it's free for the first year. And I think it's 150 or so dollars, give or take, uh, after that, where they'll have an agent assigned to you in your city that will you know, forward you any kind of correspondence you receive as, in regards to getting sued or whatnot. Um, but typically, as, as I understand it now, the last time I did it, you can make yourself that agent. So that might be a good idea if you're trying to save money and you don't want to spend a bunch of money. This would probably be, end up being 350 400 bucks when it's all said and done. Uh, and it usually takes about 25 to 30 days to go through. Um, so what they'll do is they'll submit it to the state that you put in there. So if you, if I was going to do Zen Buzz, uh, that would submit it to my state. Typically, I would check my state registry. It's going to be different for every state uh, to see if anybody else has that business name. So like I said, I like to keep things consistent across the board if at all possible. So Zen Buzz, now I've got my domain. Now I've got my trademark. Now I've got my LLC that's being filed. And if there's any issues with it, they'll contact you. And, and again, it doesn't have to match up. It's just good to have everything consistent, if at all possible, in my personal opinion. Now, the next thing you would want to do, we've checked it on Amazon. So step one, you go to check the domain, get the domain. Step two, you do the trademark search. It's available. Step three, check Amazon, see if anybody's using that name. 
Step four, you file for your LLC. Step five, now that that's all being processed, you go ahead and get your logo completed. Now, you can do this a couple different ways. I like to just go on at Fiverr and have a professional create my logos. I usually create two or three logos for maybe 50 to 100 bucks. I tend to tip really well. Um, and I usually pick one. If I don't want a revision, I'll ask for a revision. And you take those logos and you run with it. Um, if you want to create your own, you can get something like Canva for $12.99, canva.com. Basically, you can create logos. I'll do all kinds of cool things. I highly recommend it. Also, Fotor, F-O-T-O-R.com is a great tool as well. And that's very similar to Canva where it allows you to do photo editing, it allows you to do logo creation, um, and so many other things, business cards, whatever you need. So, you know, basically the easy way to do it, if you want to just spend the 50, 100 bucks, just jump on here. Uh, kind of neat how they have the burger integrated with the monkey, right? Monkey burger. Um, so, you know, you would just kind of put what you're looking to get. And here's some examples, of course, of their art. And you would pick an artist that you really like and really kind of feel like it speaks to you uh, as far as what kind of logo you want. And, you know, this looks like a very professional type of logos. And you can check their prices here. And like I said, usually they'll give you one, two, or three, depending on how much money you want to spend. Um, definitely go with one that would say that's at least, you know, four and a half, five stars. And it has a little bit of experience. Usually you're going to be happy with what you get. So that would be the next step is just getting that logo created. So at this point, we're off and running pretty quickly. You can do this all, you know, I've done this all literally in a day. Uh, it doesn't take much. It's not complicated. Um, so if you're really looking to push yourself to, you know, start the business, this is a good way to do it. Now, obviously, some people and typically start with the product itself, and we'll get to that point, but it's a good way to get the business rolling, get yourself, get the business being processed. Like I said, it can take 25, 30 days or more. At least you'll have that LLC. you have everything getting set up, and then you can start doing some product research. So this is step one of what I do, guys. Again, just to recap, I'd like to go to get the domain first. I'd like to match that up on make sure the trademark's available. I'd like to check Amazon to make sure nobody's using it. I'd like to file for the LLC, and then I'd like to go ahead and get the uh, assuming the LLC is going to go through okay, I'd like to go ahead and get the um, the logo made or, or make it myself, which I've done as well. Um, so that's uh, the first step that I do when starting to create a brand or a product. Now, if I already have that business created, that LLC created, and I, like I said, I want to start a different pet company, let's say, under – let's say I'm doing uh, art products, and then now I want to start pets under that same business name. You can just change it to Zen Pets if no way is using it, right, on Amazon, and then check the trademark because you want to be able to get brand registered because of all the great options it's going to offer you, but you need to have that trademark available in order to claim that brand registry uh, so or do it through IP Accelerator, but also they're going to file it under the trademark. So it's important to have that trademark available if you're going to start that brand on Amazon or really anywhere else. Um, I hope this helps. If you have, uh, have any questions, please email me at fbacommute at gmail.com. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate your support. Um, and if you have any comments, please leave them in the, in the remarks, and I'd be happy to get back to you. And if you have something you want me to cover specifically, I'd be happy to do that. But this is the first video in just covering kind of how I start the process. And I'm going to go through it piece by piece. And this is just video number one, guys. I hope you stick around for the next videos. And God bless. Thanks. Have a great night. Uh, thanks for stopping by.